as you can see I'm still in the garden it's still locked down hopefully in a few days time Boris will be addressing the country and taking on board what the Anglian Trust have said and their, their proposals and uh, we can actually get back on the bank in some sort of way cast a line and once again start enjoying our sport my last video was all about location and using my eyes to locate those tents which I did do very quickly they were out in the middle of the lake and um, I'd done my first visit and that morning I fished the night and the morning on the maggot on the heli rigs and I'd actually blanked spoke to a tench angler who caught two tents that morning and he caught both of those on the worm so you would have thought an angler like myself would have gone home and just made the change straight away but I am that confident on helicopter rigs and double red maggot for tench that I was very very stubborn but it just goes to show that although that rig works almost everywhere you can take it on this lake you have to actually keep an open mind and change accordingly but stubbornly I returned on my next visit I fished the helicopter rigs I fished the maggot full of confidence tent showing and guess what I blanked again third visit a mate joined me and we'd exchanged some information and he thought well Duncan's not ripping the world apart on the maggot we know that worm actually catches a few fish so I'm going to go in on the worm kebab and see what happens and fishing side by side I think I caught one tench he caught three and it was like three to one Ooh, am I still convinced and again stubbornly I stayed on the maggot although next time I went I did change one rod to the worm and one to the maggot and um, I think that visit I caught two tench on the worm one on the maggot and then on the fifth time we went out again using one rod on the worm one on maggot I think I caught a couple on the worm, nothing on the maggot, and my friend caught six to over eight pounds. So uh, that was it, sixth, uh, sixth visit to the lake, and I both rods were on the actual worm. So I'm not going to run through the helicopter rig and maggot with you because that would have been done last week in my video on spring tension, and it needs no introduction. It's a rig that you can take almost anywhere and catch fish. but. Um, I needed to actually get to know how to fish worm and the worm kebab and worm has never been a bait high on my list um, I'd never fished a worm kebab so I went home or I'd already been home and looked at Di Gribble's video on fishing worm kebab for tench taken a lot out of what he'd actually said put it into my rigs and returned to the lake both rods on the worm so anyway how did I decide to bait up? Now, there's different ways of baiting up. Some people use bait boats, you know, um, catapults, spots, bombs, etc. Um, I've never been a great lover of these. I think, one, they're miles, miles too accurate, but which isn't a bad thing, but sometimes I want to spread a bit of bait. But the thing that annoys me about these is if somebody's using one on the lake, we all know about it. They are so, so noisy. And to me, although some fish might come to the noise, quite a few will actually disappear. And when somebody's using one of these, we all know about it. And it's even more annoying because they don't always open. So my actual preferred method is one of these because literally I can fill it I can lay it down really quietly in the morning, carp anglers fish in the lake, I don't want to wake them up, and um, just lay it down nice and quietly, tease the bait out, it doesn't get a real accurate spread, but it gets that bait in that sort of area. So I've, I've taken, gone to the lake, I've got a rod, it's actually clipped up to 11, 11 wraps, same as my rigged up rods, and I only made about eight casts to these, to a far bank marker, and I've just deposited this, which is every time full of chopped worm, a bit of the compost that's actually comes with the worms, which I dampened down so it didn't come out of the spot on the car. And I also put a few red maggots in there. The reason for red maggots is I've just got so much confidence with tension red maggots. So it was the sort of thing that I was still using my go-to bait. So only takes you, you know, 10 minutes to get eight of these out tease it out 
put the, put the bait in that rod away and now it's time to get the rods out. Again, they're clipped up to where that actual bait has gone in. So, moving on to rigs. I'm, as you all know, a real great believer in the helicopter rig. That is, or that was, my starting point. Eight pound line, short hook link about the length of your finger, size 16 hook, maggot feeder, and um, but it wasn't producing the goods amazingly um, a couple of tents came along but obviously the worm kebab was a rig i had to change to so keeping in with the helicopter rigs obviously i wanted to keep some confidence i changed and this is the actual rig that we ended up using and as you can see it's really beefed up one thing i've learned about tench fishing is if you've got them in front of you and you can't catch them my, in the past I would just straight away scale down but I couldn't scale down any more than a size 16 hook on a water that which could potentially produce double figure tench it was just irresponsible so um, it was something I learned was to beef it up but the carp anglers I'd spoke to had caught tench some were getting pestered by tench so you know their rigs they're using 12 15 pound line etc etc big hooks it was all down to the bait and the presentation so um, there were a lot of rigs in between this. I went on to 10 pound main line initially, but this is what we ended up with. And this is a little bit of lead core, a couple of feet of lead core. And the reason we use lead core when it came to sort of like early June is the, the actual lead core, just when you hook a fish, it just cuts through the weed. Whereas 10 pound line wasn't, and we were having to actually barge those fish and put a lot of you know pressure on those fish when they went in weed beds where this lead core just sort of acts as a saw and cuts through we got a great big there maggot feeder which you might feel surprised because we're not using maggots and uh, again the hook link about the length of my finger smart little boom there just to keep it away from the lead core a couple of beads on there that move so it's safe and instead of that small 16 hook we'd actually moved up to a size 10 barbless and a long hair so that was basically the rig um, taken from as I said dies kind of video and just fine-tuned it between me and a couple of mates to what we um, you know what we felt confident in and this rig will literally rip the place apart so let's just talk about bait now and um, how we go about mounting worms which can be quite difficult Just moving on to bait very quickly. Um, worm you can buy from your local tackle shop. I get mine from Apollo Angling at the Marsh Farm Complex. You can order that a couple of days in advance, cash only, and it's about 17 pound a kilo. So uh, that's one way, or you can go online. Willy Worms actually do those, about the same price for kilos of uh, big red worms. But there you have to order a couple of kilos, so they have a minimal order of £35. So, uh, you know, either way, um, or you can, you know, you can dig them if you've got a good compost. Like, uh, I've got one which just helps me uh, back up some worms just for the actual feeder. To actually mount a worm, actually, on your kebab rig, you need to take quite a big dendrobina red worm or take two should I say because what we do is we put four halves onto the actual hair it's a bit messy and you use a baiting needle now some people use what's known as a quick stop which are perfect they well they're good they're not perfect actually because I find they're quite big and they split the worms um, but they hold the worm in position really well but I changed from those because they were just a little bit fiddly to just a bait and needle and I put four halves of worm on I then get my rig you obviously need quite a long hair pull those worms down actually onto your hair and then just to secure those I get a little buoyant plastic caster stick that on as you can see real messy job you do get used to it eyesight's not as good as it used to be put that on with a little bait needle bait stop sorry pull those back 
and there you have it four half a worm dangling on a hair actually irresistible now that is a very big bait but that's what actually the tench sometimes want as i said size 10 barbless hook we got a seven seven and a half pound hook link on there again the length of my finger and um, that's literally all you have to do those worms amazingly will withstand the cast and you will land tench after a hard fight and they will still be on there ready for the next cast so don't be afraid that they're going to come off easily and the way to feed, fill the feeder is again we've got a big maggot feeder and what you want is you want to get a pair of scissors which I've lost there they are chop your worms up just a handful at a time wouldn't like to be a worm at the moment and then drop those in the feeder along with some of the peat that actually the worms come in now the worms have lived in that so there's all the worm smell in there don't use ground bait we found that ground bait if anything the potential of backing off that so all you do is put that in there I normally put a few maggots in there as well just to get them to break everything up put the top on and there you have it and after a few seconds or you know 30 seconds you can see the actual worms are beginning to come out of the holes and I think it's just the smell of all those amino acids that those tents just come in, they just home in and sitting there very close to that is that lovely bunch of worms absolutely irresistible and a rig that you just cannot, cannot ignore well, not like I did for six sessions anyway uh, and this, this rig on a, on a gravel pit with big tension will actually rip it apart a uh, couple of little bits of um, advice here is just on your main tackle. I use reels, about 4,000 bait runners, load it with 10 pound line initially and then we did start using two foot of lead core at the end. Uh, rods, this is a really good quality barbel rod, you can buy specific tench rods and I started off on a 125 test curve tip but obviously once it got weedy I changed it up to a 175. Weed rakes are always good, even if it just means raking that in close so you can actually guide the tench through an area where there's no weed or if the tench are in the margins, actually raking that spot. In this instance, I couldn't rake at 50 yards. I'm sure there's ways like put a rake on the back, back of a bait boat, take it out, drop it and rake that area. But in this instance, that area was nice and clean and the more you fish that area the more tent you catch and the more tent you attract to that area they're just clean that off that spot off anyway just to give you an idea of just how successful this rig was the worm kebab at this what we thought was a very difficult venue one that I said at the start of the campaign, if I caught 12 tench, I'd be a very happy man for the whole of the spring, that is. Um, for the first, those first five visits, I think it was, um, I was catching the odd tench on the maggot and maybe a couple on the worm. And then there I was fishing one on the maggot, one on the worm, of course. On the sixth visit, we switched, there was three of us, and we switched to all fishing worm. And between us, we caught 19 tench. The biggest was 8.12. Um, going through the month of actual May, I think there was, you know, times when it was tough. I don't think there was a time when I caught none, but on average, we caught three a visit. And the best during the month of May was 9.8. And then we went into June. The weed was coming up. We'd obviously gone on to the lead core, the heavier rod. And in five visits, on using two rods and I had customers with me at the time just using two rods my rods on no sorry six visits we landed 52 tench the best bless the Mr Deeks weighed 10 pound 15 so it just gives you an idea I could have stuck on the maggot on the helicopter rig and I probably would have got around 12 for that spring campaign but by changing to worm and using this new method to me it absolutely ripped this lake apart and I don't know exactly that you know the, the end total but I know that it was just over a hundred I think it was 
big tench and that was a 9, uh, 10, 15 was the biggest fish. So um, really was gagging to get back there this spring. It's not gonna be, if we do get out of lock uh, lockdown soon, we might get a couple of weeks when, you know, they're at their biggest and still feeding hard. But um, hopefully you've taken some hints and some tips from there. Uh, the worm kebab scaling up, just don't ignore it. Get out there, cast it out, and just sit back as those alarms will scream.